Hey there, my name is Jake. This is my desktop workstation and I'm here to show it to you today. All right, so let's get started with the desk setup tour. So first things first, I'm gonna start with the mouse here. This is the Razer Basilisk X Hyperspeed wireless mouse. It's the cheapest wireless mouse that Razer has. Um, it's just a budget wireless mouse and it's served me well for the past two years, basically. I did have to get my original one replaced due to a double clicking issue. But other than that, this mouse feels good to use. Um, it's wireless, I like the shape of it. I like that there isn't really any RGB, it's just a simple black mouse and that's kind of what I was looking for. All right, so next step is this keyboard right here. This is the HyperX Alloy FPS Pro keyboard, 10 keyless, uh, Cherry MX Blue switches. It's very clicky and it definitely does get picked up on my microphone, which I will talk about in a bit but uh, I really wanted the 10 keyless keyboard. I've had this for around two years now. And although the clickiness is getting a little bit to me, I can't really justify the price of a better keyboard at this point. So for now, the HyperX 10 keyless alloy FPS pro, whatever the hell, I think that's what it's called anyway. This keyboard will do for me. It's nice and simple. I like the red accent. It goes with my little red light, which I will also be talking about later. Uh, it comes with a USB cable for connection, nice cable. Um, and it also has these little feet on the back of it, which you can flip up for a little bit of an angle when typing on the keyboard. The next thing that I wanna talk about from the setup is my mouse pad. I'm not really gonna be able to show it from this angle, so I'll have some close-ups showing over this, but this is a custom mouse pad from Design by Humans. It has a really cool band sound design on it. And if you know me, you know that I really like rock and metal music and I needed a new mouse pad. I was getting tired of my old one, and I, I thought this design was sick. It showcases my passion for rock and metal music in a mouse pad, even though most of the design gets covered up by my keyboard. And it's also a very large mouse pad. It covers up most of my desk, um, but I like that. I like having it covering my keyboard and my mouse. I have plenty of room to move my mouse around on the mouse pad, and it's a pretty solid quality too. It's not like a gamer brand mouse pad by any means, but honestly, I think the aesthetic is worth it, and it. I don't really notice a difference between it and other mouse pads that I've had in the past. So I really like this mouse pad. Uh, probably the newest upgrade to my little desk setup anyway. Moving on, I wanna talk about this over here. This is a USB card reader, USB hub, and a phone stand all in one from Ugreen. So I hold my phone on it so I don't have it just swaying on my desk. Uh, but then I also have three USB spots and I also have an SD card reader and knowing that I'm working with video a lot and photography, having an SD card reader is very important. And I thought the multifunctionality of this SD card reader and USB hub was a really cool addition to my setup. So it just sits in the corner of my desk right now. Um, and I also use it to hide my USB charging cable for my phone away when I'm not using it. Now, moving on from the peripherals to the audio side of things, let's talk about my microphone here. This is a Audio-Technica AT2020 USB microphone with a pop filter on it off of a very cheap boom arm from Newer. And yes, it's not the best mic arm in the world, but it just clamps back at the bottom of my desk back here and it holds my microphone a lot closer to me and it saves some space on my desk that otherwise would be taken up by a microphone and could be impacting my mouse. Uh, I've had this microphone and this microphone arm for three or four years at this point and it's been a fantastic addition to my setup. All right, with the microphone out of the way, I'm going to take out the headset. That was out of frame, that was pretty cool, huh? This is the HyperX Cloudflight wireless headset with uh, custom ear cushions because my original ear cushions for this headset fell off or were starting to degrade. Uh, but this headset has been fantastic for me. I've had this for over three years at this point and they're just a fantastic wireless headset, USB. Um, there's a detachable microphone for it as well. And there's also a cord that you can plug into an audio jack. So you can either go 
for the wireless experience or if you need to use it through a cable, you can use it through a cable as well. The last piece of my audio setup here at my little desk workstation are these bad boys right here. These are the Mackie CR3-X speakers, studio monitors, whatever you wanna call them. And I think they sound great. Uh, there is an aux cord and a headphone cord uh, on the left speaker. And there's also a nice frontal audio control right there. And I think they sound great. Uh, they match the green that my room uh, wall has, uh, which is another really nice touch as well. So overall, those speakers have been really useful, although I admittedly don't use them terribly often, um, just to not cause a disturbance in the house. Um, but they are a fantastic addition to my setup. They look great, they sound great, and I see no reason to upgrade anytime soon. All right, let's talk about lights. I've got two lights set up on this right here. So behind my desk, at the back of my desk, as you can see, is this little flood right here. This is a 30 watt RGB LED flood light from Onforu. I got off of Amazon. They're a two pack. I've got the other one um, in a different location right now. But that one right there, having it under my little monitor riser, adds a nice splash of color to my setup instead of just uh, the one color of the LED strips that I have running out of the back of my computer case. And it also illuminates my mouse pad late at night, which is why I have it set to red. So I have it kind of dimmed down on the brightness so it isn't too overpowering, but it matches the red of my keyboard and it creates a nice glow. So my mouse pad isn't entirely dark late at night. And it's a very small little addition to my setup. Uh, I originally wasn't gonna use those floodlights for this purpose, but uh, I found that they were a really nice touch to my setup, specifically in that spot there. So I figured, why not? And I've kept it there ever since, basically. Now let's talk about the probably biggest thing that many people are wondering about, the two monitors that I've got here on the setup. I have the Gigabyte M27Q, uh, 1440p, 170 hertz, IPS monitor, a fantastic budget, 1440p, fast refresh rate gaming monitor. I just got this at the end of 2021 and it made an unbelievable change to my viewing experience and working on a bigger monitor. I used to have a 24 inch monitor there instead and all of that extra space that a 27 inch gives me plus 1440p. Uh, the 144 to 170 hertz refresh rate jump doesn't make that much of a difference. It is a nice touch. Um, albeit my computer can't exactly support uh, refresh rates up to that monitor. But when I do upgrade my PC in the future, I will be able to make full use of this monitor's capabilities. And in the meantime, I'm certainly loving using it anyway. So I would definitely recommend a 1440p monitor if you can afford one. And the Gigabyte M27Q has been a really solid upgrade for me in the six or seven months that I have had it. And up top is an Asus VP249, 24 inch, 75 Hertz refresh rate IPS monitor. I mostly use that monitor for just leaving other things. When I'm editing in Premiere, I'll leave all my folders up on the top monitor. I'll leave Spotify and Discord up there. Anything that I don't actively need, but like to have open when I'm working on other things on my main monitor, I leave on that second monitor. Um, just the extra workspace really does help for it. So I don't always have to be clicking between Premiere and then going into my Firefox where I can just go up. Uh, and the reason I'm going for a vertical mounted design instead of the uh, horizontal one, which I think is generally preferable, is just that I am in a very cramped space here. I can only go up. I don't really have room horizontally to do a horizontal monitor setup in my room here. So I had to go vertical. And the last two things that I'm going to make mention of are the desk and the chair that I'm using. So this desk is the Atlantic Gaming Desk. It's just a black desk. It's served me fine. I've had this desk for over six years at this point, and it is small, but it is a desk that fits into this small workspace that I have. Um, it is a little bit shaky. It's not the most stable, um, but it does have a nice cable management rack at the bottom. Uh, to manage all my cables from the back of my PC. And it also has a headphone holder attachment and it also has a cup holder attachment where I can keep my water bottle here. Uh, but otherwise, it's just a very basic desk. Um, it's not doing anything too crazy, uh, but I do find it as a nice desk. And then lastly, I have my Amazon Basics Mesh Swivel Office Chair. I, again, have had this for close to six years. 
it's not amazing by any means, but it is comfortable enough for me and the cost of upgrading is not really worth it for me at this point. So an Amazon Basics office chair will have to do for now. With that, that's gonna be it for this first test video using my brand new camera. Uh, as much as I did want to show off my setup here because I am quite proud of it. I also realized that I just got this new camera. It's the Canon 90D as a graduation gift for completing college and I needed an excuse to test out the video functions and capabilities of this camera. So I figured why not record a desk setup tour which I can do entirely without having to leave my room. So that's what I did. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed. If you did watch this video, I may or may not do more stuff like this in the future. Um, I hope you enjoyed. That's gonna be it for me. Peace.